hello everyone so now we are going to do one more lab for vrf i hope you watch already the first video which we done the vrf in that one we discuss the what is vrf and we done one lab for the vrf by using the routing protocol ospf now what we are going to do we are going to do the same lab similar lab but here we are going to use the eigrp so let me explain you the scenario if already you watch the first video of the vrf you know already the scenario but anyhow let me repeat here see here what i am saying i have the customer h a so imagine this is a company a if you are confused with the customer h no need to worry imagine this is a company a side one you have company a side two so same company a company name is a we can say okay company a is having two sides side one and side two and this is a service provider router that is a isp service provider internet service provider router we have here and other side we have the customer edge b side 1 customer edge b side 2 so you can think company b side 1 here company b side 2 is here and here if you see this is a lan network for company a is using for side 1 and this is a lan network company a is using for the side 2 if you see here also they are also using the same thing because this is a private ip anyone can use okay they taken the connection from the service provider service provider told them okay assign this ip and run the eigrp any routing protocol they they can run but service provider will tell you because we are using here vrf uh, if you maybe after some videos you will get the mpls video in that one what we discuss we discuss how service provider is doing the mpls so for that purpose service provider is creating the virtual routing table and they are putting the routes so no issue you will get that topic after few videos so no need to worry now you need to understand here service provider give you this ip and he told run here put this ip to this interface and whatever lan you want to use the subnet use that subnet and enable the eagrp here okay so service provider told you to enable the eagrp you are going to do that one here this side same thing here also they told assign this ip and do the eagrp here so you will run the eagrp here but the problem here if we did not do the vrf in this router this route will be mixed with this customer because they are using the same private ip okay they are using same private ip so we will have the issue so for that purpose what we will do we will create here vrf vrf is same like a vlan like in the switch we are doing the vlan here we are doing the vrf so we will have the separate routing table so this isp is going to create the vrf a for the company a and he is going to put this interface this interface in that vrf a okay and he is going to enable the eagrp so this route will be go only here not it will not go to the other customer same thing he is going to create the vrfb and he is going to put this and this interface in that vrfb and he is going to do the configuration eagrp for that one so there is some small changes in the eagrp configuration when you are doing for the vrf so let's see that one first of all you need to remember customer don't know anything about the vrf customer is not running customer do the normal configuration just whatever ip isp give he will assign that ip he will put whatever lan card they are using he will put that lan card ip and they are going to enable the what we can say routing protocol whatever routing protocol isp is using isp will tell you or you will tell to isp i will use this one okay so now in this scenario imagine isp give you this ip they told run the eagrp eagrp with the process id 1 okay we can say they are asking use the as number as 1 for the eagrp so you are going to do the configuration so here i already wrote the configuration to save the time if you see here this is the configuration for the customer edge a okay side one for this router so what we are doing generally just we are assigning the ip whatever ip we are using we are using 12.1 okay and this should be 24 i wrote this here by mistake this should be 24 let me correct maybe you you will have the confusion later so i will put here this is a slash 24 okay slash 24 all the ip whatever we are using here that is a slash 24 okay so let me correct here also that is a slash 24 here also slash 24 okay 
so now i will assign the ip so basic thing whatever we are doing from basic stuff from ccna same thing just you will assign the ip address to the interface we are using slash 24 so you will have the 255.255.255.0 same thing here also you are going to do you are going to take the loop back here as a lan network and you are going to assign the what we can say you are going to assign the ip address whatever ip we are using then you will write router eagrp1 and you will write the network id of this one so network id is 12.0 and here is 1.0 so you enable the eagrp on the customer edge that is a customer edge side a company a so now i will copy this i will paste in this customer router let me take the console of this all router also because we will uh, enable here at least uh, else it will take lot of time so let this router to be ready i will take the console of all the router i will write here no and we can copy paste that so i will open let me open the branch also that is a company b this i am saying company b here also i will take this one also i will say no and let me take the what we can say the isp router here i will write here also no now let's go here company a side one is ready so i can copy paste this configuration this is a basic configuration just assigning the ip address enabling the eagrp with the is number one that's all okay this one is finished now i will go to the side two of the company a and side two of the company is also having the configuration if you see this is the company a only side two configuration is simple just you need to assign the ip address if you see 13.1 i am going to use here and loop back i am using as lan network that is 2.1 and just we enable the eagrp this is simple as we already know so i will copy and paste this in the router this one company a side two router so everything is good here no error nothing same like that we will go for the company b this is a company b here also same thing we will say this is a company b side one and ip is using 192.168.14.1 and loop back we are using 1.1 because uh, this is a private ip anyone can use no issue for lan network so they are using and we enable the eagrp process id one and we are writing this if you want to use the different process id your wish because this eagrp is different if you see here this eagrp is different here okay this eagrp is different here we are using separate virtual routing table also here so your wish if you want to use the different process id you sorry different what we can say as number you can use different as number so let's use the different as number for the customer b i will say for the customer b i will use two i can say like this also okay so if i use two here it will change to here it will change to here also and when we are doing here eagrp configuration for the isp let me check okay first of all i will explain here see what we are doing this is a customer b side one assigning the ip address and we are saying i am enabling the eagrp by using the as number two okay and i put here whatever ip i want to put here what ip i am using same thing i will do for the customer what we can say customer b side number two so the, here also they enable the eagrp with the process id in the service provider network what we need to do we need to create the vrf because you need to remember when we want to create the vrf what we need to do we need to create the vrf with the customer name so easily we can identify so i am saying company a company b so i will create two virtual routing table vrf is nothing but virtual routing forwarding that is nothing but creating the virtual router in the same physical router so how we will create we will write ip vrf a so with this one we will have the virtual routing table with the name a same thing i will do for b then i am going to put this interface fast ethernet 0 by 0 fast ethernet 1 by 0 in the vrf so we need to go under that interface and write ip vrf forwarding and give the company name we created two vrf one is vrf a another is vrf b so in which vrf you want to put put that name and then assign the ip address if we assign the ip address before they are going to remove that one so we need to assign again so we assign the ip address here we are using 12.2 then i will do the same thing for fast ethernet 1 by 0 this one i will move this interface with this command in the vrf a then i am going to assign the ip address whatever we are going to use same thing we will do for this interface fast ethernet 2 by 0 and fast ethernet 3 by 0 to assign to the vrf b after that we are going to do the configuration here if you say i wrote here router eagrp1 okay router eagrp1 we need to write address family ipv4 
in which VRF you want to configure this EAGRP. So I need to configure in VRF A. Then we will write what is your autonomous system number. So what is the number you are using? You write that same number. After that define the network ID. So these two interface you need to put in the VRFA. You put in the VRFA already. Now you need to enable this two as a EAGRP1. So then we will put the network ID of this interface and this interface. So 192.168.12.0. 192.168.13.0 here and here as we told we will use the process id 2 so you will write process id uh, that is uh, as number 2 so we will put as number 2 okay router eagrp whatever you are planning to use this side that as number and then ip address uh, address family ipv4 which vrf you are doing the eagrp configuration we are doing for the vrfb so you need to write vrfb then you need to write the autonomous system number, whatever the system number we are using, we are using two. Then put the network ID, whatever network ID you have for this interface. This is simple only, okay. Here what you have new thing, you have this new thing, this. In the normal EIGRB, whatever we are doing here in the customer side, we are not writing this address family. In the customer side here, we are not writing that one. In the service provider only we are using. Why we are using these two commands means because I need to enable the EIGRP for VRFA. So for that purpose, we need to write address family IPv4 VRF, which VRF you are configuring this one VRFA. Then write the autonomous system, whatever the number of the autonomous system and then put the network ID of this interface and this interface. That's all. Same thing here also you will do router EIGRP, whatever process ID you are using. If you are using one, you can use one. I am using two and then address family IPv4 VRFB. Then autonomous system, whatever we are using, we are using two autonomous system. Then network ID of this one is 14.0. Okay, and here is 15.0. That's all. So this is a configuration. So now let's copy paste this configuration in the router one by one. I think we paste it in the R1 and also in the R2. Okay, that is customer A, customer A side one, side two, we done. Now we need to do the customer B. Where is customer B? This is a customer B side one. I will paste this in the customer B side one. Let me paste here. Everything is good. If you see, we are using the AS number as two here. Then I will go for the here. I can say this is the customer two. Okay, we can say this is a side two of the customer B. I will go to the side two of the customer B. I will paste this here. Okay, I will paste this here. After that, what I will do, I will put the ISP configuration. So ISP configuration is this one from here to here. It is simple already we done for uh, this lab in the OSPF. We use instead of EAGRP, we use the OSPF, we done already similar, but here little change in the configuration, that's all. So now I will paste and the, I will paste this configuration. If you see no error, nothing, everything is good. After that, if you want to check, you can write here like in which VRF you have, if you want to check, you can write show IP, uh, IP root, VRF. And if you are having confusion, put question mark and write here. For VRF A, you want to check, so check. This is for the VRF A, routing table for VRF A. And if you want to get the routing table for VRF B, you can see routing table for VRF B. Both are having separate routing table. If you see, they are using the same subnet, but they are having the different, what we can say, different routing table okay what i wrote show ip vrf show ip vrf i can put so we can see here i have the vrf a vrf b this rd value no need to worry this one we are going to use in the mpls okay so whatever in vrf a i have two interface if you see this two interface is in the vrf a and in the vrf b we have the two interface we can check this way and this is the routing table if you want to check you will write show ip root vrf a or b if you want to check the b this is a vrf b routing table in this one you learn the two root from the d d is nothing but eagrp and same thing here if you see you are writing here show ip vrf a so this is a vrf a routing table if you write directly show ip root you will not have there because we don't have anything in that one this is a global routing table so in the global routing table we don't have anything only in the vrf we have we have vrf a and vrf b so now example this customer A, okay, customer A side 1 want to communicate with the customer A side 2. How they will communicate? They will ping example. Let me go here. I will write ping 192.168.2.1. Okay, I am writing 2.1. 
this is a 2.1 if you see here what i am saying again let me repeat this is the 192 168 1.1 .1. okay this is a 1.1 .1. i am pinging from here to customer a side 2 so i am pinging this ip so they are requ replies coming so maybe you are saying maybe you are confused and you are saying this network is this subnet is present here also so maybe we are getting reply from this subnet maybe you are confused that way also maybe if you don't know the vrf concept maybe you are saying maybe sir it is not coming from here maybe it is coming from here so let me show you how we can check it is coming from this router or from this router we can do the trace route in that one you will get that information okay so you can write trace route and put that one 192.168 what we can say 1 uh, 2.1 2.1 and source we are putting from our loopback if you write source put the loopback ip okay what is the meaning of this one if i write source like this and put this ip if i do trace route from here so it will take from this side if you want to send the trace route from here then you will write the source source and you will put this ip so it will go from this side not from here it will go from here okay so if you see here where it is going it it come here okay 12.2 means it is coming from here to here then it will come here 13.1 okay if you see 13.1 that means it is going from where if you are sending any data to 2.1 it is going this way like this by using the trace route you can easily identify here if you see first it go 192 12.2 so this interface it came after that it is coming where 13.1 so this interface is 192.168.13.1 so it is working perfectly it is not going here because it is having separate routing table so how they can go they will not go and let's see here also in the customer b they want to do same thing they want to send some information customer b so what he will do he will ping also let me put here ping they want to test 192.168.2.1 so it is working perfectly example if you want to ping from your source so you will write 192.168 1.1 so it is working perfectly here maybe you are saying sir i am getting the data from the customer a no you are not getting the data from the customer a i will check we will check here like this way okay and then you can write source and what is your source this is the customer b so here this is the source so we, you will write source and put the ip of your loopback so that is your lan network you are pinging from your lan network you are sending the traffic from here you can do directly also if you do di directly it will come from fast ethernet 0 by 0 but example you want to send the traffic from here this is loop back but imagine in your real scenario you will have this is as a lan network okay so if you see how the traffic is going traffic is coming 14.2 so where is 14.2 this is 14.2 so traffic is coming 192 14.2 from here it is coming this way after that it will come here so this ip is 192.168.15.1 okay we assign 15.1 here so traffic see it is coming from here to here this way so we have good no issue routes are not mixing because we use the different routing table we are if we use that we create different routing table we put this interface in that routing table and we use here different routing table and we put the different interface so no issue okay so this is a vrf we already learned the vrf concept and we done one lab one lab already that we use the ospf instead of the ehr you can use the static route also you can use the rip you can use different routing protocol also but in our syllabus they add cisco add in the new syllabus as uh, vrf with eigrp so i done this one also so now you can have the idea configuration is very simple just you need to understand when you are doing the configuration you will write router eigrp whatever as number you are writing after that address family if you are using ipv4 then you will write ipv4 vrf give the vrf name and then autonomous system and give whatever the autonomous system you are using if you are using one write one and then define the network id of that one that's all okay this is the vrf configuration for with eigrp so i hope you enjoy this video in case if you have any doubts you can write in the chat okay thank you